Hello. Sergio. Yes. Hey, brother. Dave Lawrence, Hawaii Public Radio, calling you. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Nice talking to you. You too. And it sounds like we've just got a uh, tasty landline going on, huh? It sounds really good on your end. Wonderful. I thought... Out to the next door. <laughs> <laughs> My young and talented friend. So great to have you back on the show. Wonderful. And thanks for doing this. I really appreciate your time, my friend. My pleasure. My pleasure, always. An exciting time to have you back in town, too, Sergio, with this In the Key of Joy. And this is a new record plus a documentary. You're a busy boy right now. That's right. I am. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that uh, kind of like your benchmark for who you are is reading a quote about this new record, and it kind of sums up everything that people have appreciated about you over all these decades. You said, quote, I love to work with different people from different cultures, different countries, different generations, and different styles. And with that in mind, tell us about this record. It includes American rap artist Buddy, includes a wide array of folks from so many different places. It's exactly what you just described. I mean, it's my curiosity, and it's a great pleasure for me to go to the, to the studio and collaborate with, uh, you know, not only young artists, but maybe some older artists. Like, I have a, younger, um, a young rapper from L.A., but I also have Common as my guest, and he's a classic rapper. And uh, so it was just a great encounter of musicians and singers, great melodies, and uh, and fresh songs you know well, i didn't do we didn't do any covers or anything like that i wrote uh, a lot of the songs on the album so that was another another topic on this album so yeah we had a great time and you mentioned uh so you have common you've got buddy you've got your lovely and talented wife as well who else yes. is on you with this record name some of the other folks well joe pizzullo that sang never gonna let you go with me years ago was a huge hit right uh and then his daughter uh which is called sugar jones she's my uh god daughter we baptize her so i have father and daughter to <laughs> sing another song i have the great brazilian <coughs> artist hermeto pasqual and i have carlinhos brown and the great brazilian percussionist from rio i did most of the percussion in brazil and all the vocals here in l.a and uh, yeah, it was a wonder, wonderful time. And when it comes to the recording of that in Brazil, let me back up a, a second. When it comes to like some of these guests, like let's start with the hip hop cats. It starts with the song. It starts with the melody. I sit down on the piano and write a song and give it to somebody else to write a lyric. And because I don't want to write lyrics. So, I mean, for me, melody is the most important thing. Got it. Uh, after the song is ready, and then I say, well, who would be nice to be a guest on this song? Mm -hmm. It goes like, it starts with the song and ends with the song. So there's no uh, no formula whatsoever. So you start with the melody. You've written... Start with the melody that I wrote. Then the arrangement, go to the studio, record the melody, do the arranging. And then, okay, maybe that song, uh, we can have a singer here, we can have a rapper, we can have a... You know, whatever, an instrumental. And they'll come with their own lyrics and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's freestyles like a great jazz musician. They improvise, they come to the studio. Same, same thing happens with Buddy and Common. And they improvise when they hear the song. And the studio is just an amazing, amazing process. So everything is very organic and very spontaneous. And as far as the lyrics with the other ones that aren't the hip-hop artists? Then I choose the lyrics. Ah. For instance... The song that I don't have the album in front of me, that Joe Pizzullo sings. Right. Yeah, I had uh, Paul Williams, which is a great, you know, classic lyricist. Sure. That wrote the, the Love Came Between Us. He wrote the lyrics. Uh, on the other songs, there's a girl that I met here in L.A. Her name is Nisha. She's from India, and she speaks fluent English. She's a great lyricist. She wrote a lot of the lyrics. lyrics. I have a singer, a great singer named Shalea. I don't know if you heard about it. And she's an amazing singer. And again, Nisha wrote the lyrics. So, you know, because I don't write lyrics, I only I send them the melody, and then, then we talked about what it fits, what is uh, not fit. 
That's great. That's, that's how it works. That's great insight. And that's huge. How lucky for Nisha, the girl who you said was from India. How did she come into your life? Uh, now she plays this great role of getting to write your lyrics. You know, it's word of mouth. Uh, like Shalea come through. I knew about her, but she came through my engineer. Got it. And you might talk to somebody. Oh, there's this great lyricist. I get it. Uh, that kind of thing. You know, it's a it. lot of word of mouth. And uh, then you meet the person. Listen, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. That's a great point. So what you're saying is a lot of the time you'll attempt a collaboration or something. You'll go, mm, yeah. this isn't the right thing or That's otherwise. Correct. Yeah, it happens. Not a lot, right. but it happens. Yeah, it happens. That's cool. Absolutely. Well, that's a lot of insight for your fans into how some of this stuff gets put together. I dig it. And and the same with this documentary. Now, that's even more of a, uh, in terms of something that covers, this is a, a career-spanning documentary. I was looking online. I saw you guys just did a, uh, was it Santa Barbara? Did yes, yes, yes. They opened you know, the Santa Barbara Film Festival. It was wonderful. We had uh, two standing ovations, and uh, people reacted so beautifully to the to the documentary, which was done by John Scheinfeld. He did uh, Coltrane, he did, uh, he did Harry Nilsson, and uh, we spent two years together. We went to Brazil, we visit, you know, my whole, my whole journey, you know, the clubs that I play in Copacabana, and then he interviewed a lot of people in Brazil and in the United States. And it's, it's, it's really beautiful, and I'm very, very pleased with it. When you were on last time, this thing was just getting underway, I guess, because you, right. you were telling me a little about it then. Uh -huh. So when you talk about, like, flying to Brazil with him, explain a little. So you guys, what do you plan out? You bring a whole crew. How long do you go? How does something like that come together? He brought, he brought the whole crew. Uh, we use people in Brazil uh, for lights and things like that. But uh, he brought a crew of three or four people and himself. And uh, so we went to the city that I was born, across the bay from Rio, and the building where I used to live, things like that. Then took the ferry to Rio, uh, to, to the clubs that I used to play in Copacabana during the Bossa Nova days. And um, so that, that was it, you know, and interviewed a lot of people down there. And who do you bring with you when you go on a trip like that? Uh, my wife came down with me. I don't, I don't bring anybody. <laughs> no, no big entree. So just, no, 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 no. I very did. organic and very simple. Well, it's really a special thing yeah, too. Because you know, he's filming and he, you know, the sound or a lot of stuff he rented in Brazil, but, uh, you know, but most of the stuff, you know, was there and, and he brought, he brought some people in. What but a just, cool. Yeah, but it's a cool thing, yes. Oh, it's so, and, and it's neat that you can uh, touch on different internet. I mean, it's a very international story, your life. And when, yes. when I think about the documentary and some of the early days, like, for example, recording with Cannonball Adderley, Herbie Mann, getting to play at Carnegie Hall, does that come up in this thing? Yes, it does, and there are pictures of that, and that, absolutely. You have to come and see it. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> and and that uh, the Carnegie Hall that was. Did that end up being a record? Uh, the short Carnegie Hall ended up being a record. Uh, it was all the guests that was there. Uh, I don't have that record, but I remember they released the record at the time. It was with other people like Antonio Carlos Jobim right, and right. Uh, Stan Getz, Dizzy Gillespie. A lot of other people. I think they released the record at the time. But my record was kind of about, you know, of course, was released. What were some of the early TV appearances from that oh, era? Oh, everything. I mean, Danny Kaye special, Fred Astaire, uh, Johnny Carson several times, Merv Griffin, all of those things, you know. I did a, a bunch of them. Wow, that's Fred Astaire. That is yeah, a... yeah, yeah. <laughs> that thing to the look of love. That is amazing. Now, you have some presidential encounters in that? I did. I did play for President Nixon and for President Reagan. Reagan and Nixon. And and when you are making the documentary and you have to go back to that sort of era, I wonder, do you, at your house, do you keep a lot of mementos? Or how does this There's guy get of, on them? A lot of pictures from those those times, and we talked about that. And there's a lot, a lot of pictures that we have, luckily, because in those days was no no video, right? No, no, you know, no smartphone either. Right. 
<laughs> exactly. Couldn't right. record every second of everything. Right, the way it is today. That's a very, yeah. very good point. But so did you save a lot of stuff yourself, though, pictures and stuff, so you were able to help? Yes, yes. That's kind of cool, huh? It's a reward for holding on to the stuff all these years that you can Absolutely. work with the director and be able to incorporate that. And as well as some of these, this record that you have, all these amazing collaborations on it, and you're kind of known as a collaborator through your life. Like, tell the story of how Stevie Wonder and you came together for the real thing. He wrote that, right? Yeah, he did. He came because we, he... I met him here in L.A. because he had a guitar... His guitarist was was uh, Michael Simbello. And Michael Simbello, girl's friend, was a singer in my band. So we met like that. And then uh, we became very good friends with Stevie... And he told me one time he wanted to to sing something in Portuguese. So I wrote for the first time some lyrics for him in Portuguese. Uh, it's called, uh, I'm trying to remember the song. Anyway, it's on the, now you got me working, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> my brother. Uh, anyway, so he sang and he thanked me so much. He gave me a platinum album. Wow. And he said, I got a song for you. So he wrote the real thing. He had an amazing genius. Kind of like a payback. It I'm a like. huge, huge fan. What a neat thing. And did you guys play yeah. it live and stuff? Yes, we did. We did, yeah. Do you tell any of that story in the documentary? Yes. Did Stevie record a, a new interview? No, inter unfortunately, he was traveling. You couldn't get him. Uh, we got Quincy Jones. We got uh, many, many people in there. What yeah. about uh, when I think about this? Again, we're talking to Sergio Mendez. He has this incredible new record that's out in the key of joy, documentary as well. And one of the things that uh, you have through your life, I guess, is a, a partnership. A fr it starts, I guess it starts as business, but ends up being friends. Your critical introduction to Herb Alpert, Jerry Moss, man, and then Herb all these years later, still a factor in your life. Absolutely. They're both on the documentary, of course, and Lonnie, which was the voice of Brazil 66. And uh, we are dear friends and they're coming. We're going to show the film here in L.A., they're gonna be there, and yeah, I'm, I'm forever grateful to them because they they opened the first big door for me, you know, and was Brazil '66, and it was a great encounter with them. And wasn't it through meeting you that Herb met Lonnie, who would yes, go on to be his wife? That's right. Yeah, that's correct. And then you guys, when did you guys start touring together back then? We start touring, I would say '66, because we finished the album in like in May. And then we start touring in, uh, you know, summertime. And when you do a tour like that back then, it was pretty different, huh? Like, how long were... I always, when you hear about bands like the Beatles back then, you always hear they played, like, 20-minute sets, like these really short uh, performances. How long were your performances in the 60s when you and Herb were doing those uh, those tours together? Well, I was an opening act for him. Okay. So we probably did, I don't know... 40, half an hour or something, I don't I don't recall. And he'd play a full, like, how long? Yeah, he played a full, I would say, hour and a half or huh. something like that, yeah. Wow, so it changed, yeah, yeah. I guess, in the 60s yeah. pretty quickly. And, yeah. pe and people did longer jams like yeah. that. You know what's neat with Lonnie is she's come back through your life for some other projects, oh. including one, you produced her vocals for the James Bond film, Never Say Never right. Again. That's right. She's a dear friend, a great singer. Well, I really appreciate all the stories today. Really looking forward to you arriving in town for these shows at the Blue Note. Talk to you in Honolulu, though. We can do that at the club before the show. I would that like would be that. nice. I would like that very much. It's my pleasure. Let's do that. I will work it out with the club and your people. Wonderful. I'll see you then, brother. Thank you so much.